All right, everybody, hello and welcome as always. I'm Sean, this is In The Mix, episode number 22. That's four, I know total fingers, but 20 and two, think of it that way, of our Pentagon Challenge. If you haven't gone and checked out last week's episode, go and have a look. It's gonna bring you guys up to date on how our season with Shen Yang went. We did leave at the end of the season. Spoilers, you guys have probably already seen it in the thumbnail and the description and all that stuff. But we have moved on to a new club, which I'm incredibly excited about. So we've got a whole new squad to introduce, some slight tactical tweaks, some very, very exciting stuff relating to the finance which I can't wait to show you guys because it is absolutely breathtaking. But let's jump in and meet our new club, Guangzhou Evergrande. So as you guys can see, we are one game played at the start of the season. We are sitting top of the league, which is fantastic uh, with an early season victory. That was because there was like a two and a half week gap between the first game of the season and the second. And I wanted to kind of go through a little bit of stuff relating to the season preview and get some stats from some of the other teams before we go too much further. But the club, we'll start there. Guangzhou Evergrande. They were one of the two sides that had a job up for grabs at the end of the last episode. The other one was Henan, who had gotten relegated last year, but still had a ton of cash. The other job that actually came up was the Jiangsu job uh, throughout the course of preseason. We interviewed for both that and this job. It took them weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to actually get back to us. But we interviewed, we interviewed successfully. We got the job. They are one of the top three clubs in China in terms of overall reputation. So we're definitely making a jump up. Finances here being rich, more on that to come. We will go through that in a moment. But they have a great history. If we go and have a look at their wins for trophies, they've got two Asian Champions League titles, 10 Chinese Super League titles, including ones won in this game universe, two FA Cups, a couple of First Division titles, a few other All-Star stuff, FA Super Cups, whatever else. So they've been in and around the very top of that division for quite a while. If you think of the likes of like Paulinho, maybe more regional specific at this one, Ricardo Goulart or Goulart. Paulinho, I think, went here from Tottenham and then went to Barcelona from here as well. So, like, they do bring in some big players. They do pay them quite a bit of cash and they are continuing to pay a bit of cash now in this in-game universe. I think their starting squad is very, very strong as well. One of the better squads in Asia at the beginning of the database. Obviously, we are now... 14 years down the track, it's kind of changed a little bit, but they are still very, very strong and I'm very excited to be here and a part of it and involved. Over the last few seasons, they haven't done that well. So they did finish top on 2022. So 12 years ago, they haven't gotten back up to that level since. Their lowest place finish was actually last year, finishing 12th in the division. They are trying to get back up to challenge for that title again. And that's really the expectation that we've set with them for this season. If we look at the club vision, can't sign China, non-Chinese goalkeepers. We need to sign high reputation players. More on that to come. They're devastated for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'll show you that with the uh, ins and outs. They want me to spend the transfer budget, which to me is crazy. Like we've been in such a like financially constrained environment for ages that they want us to actually try and go out there and spend the money, which is crazy to me. We have to qualify for the Champions League. So we need a top four finish. We need to reach the final of the Chinese FA Cup. That one could be potentially tricky, but we'll see how we go. And they want us to return to be the most reputable team in China. At the moment, that is Shandong because they've won four of the last five league titles. So that's something that they're hoping will get done in the next few seasons. But really what we've got this year is really trying to get back up to the top of the title winning picture. Maybe we can try and really push and go for a title this season. I think we've got all the tools to do it. And then hopefully as we get back into the Champions League, start bringing you guys more of that journey. So what you might see this week, maybe we'll do this episode to introduce everything. And then we might come back at the end of the week, at the end of the first season, see how we've gone, see how our results have been, have a look at the squad and how they developed and where we potentially want to try and improve throughout the course of history. But the squad, because this is the part that you guys want to see and want to care about quite a bit. There are some astronomical wages. Guys getting paid 600K a week, which is more than half of what we were spending at Shenyang the last couple of seasons and some phenomenal ability in there as well. You can see a lot of these guys are new players. They aren't people that you guys have seen before. There were some that I brought back across, some big stars that you may have heard in other games when we played against Guangzhou, when we played in the Champions League, that sort of thing. But in reality, I think most of the players that we are working with are going to be relatively new faces to you guys given how quickly we have been firing through the seasons of late. But starting at the back, Yu Ming Kun, he is a familiar face because he was our goalkeeper at Shenyang Urban. We signed him from Hebei Fortuna when his contract came up as a junior player, still only 24, still very, very good, starting to actually get call-ups into the Chinese national side. His contract was up. He was a free transfer. I brought him straight across. We can't really sign non-Chinese goalkeepers. That's one of the requirements. There aren't that many goalkeepers that realistically we can get. Jiang Yu from Tianjin, if we were to try and put a bid in for him, let's just say we did 135 million, it's unacceptable. So they want ridiculous money. Yu Ming Kun's currently the backup. Zhang Peng, who's at Chongqing, tried to get him a couple of seasons ago, couldn't get him. We can't really get him across either. So best option that was available on the market for us as far as Chinese goalkeepers are concerned. Thrilled to have Yu Ming Kun joining us again and to be working with him. 
Not the only player that I've bought from Shenyang, Urbahan. I did bring across Zhu Qi, who was arguably our best player over the last two seasons at Shenyang. We've been using him as a ball playing defender, which he's getting a little bit more comfortable with. Passing maybe needs a little bit of work to play at a continental level, but only 21 years of age. Three and a half star current ability, five star potential, an excellent player. He will be very, very important for us this season. Excited to see what he can do this year. More on how much he cost in a minute. Uh, they, this guy was already at the club. Hey, we, I'm going to go with it's how to pronounce this, or maybe Way. Let me know in the comment section which one you prefer. Uh, but he looks to be a fairly solid academy prospect that came through, had a few different loan spells. Uh, was at Shandong for a bit. We picked him up prior to me joining, actually. He was already signed with the club when we joined. Decent enough, 20 years of age, four-star potential ability. He'll do for right now. Potentially right back's a spot we might try and grow and develop a little bit further. But for right now, very, very happy to have a player of that quality there and on the books. Over at left back, a familiar name, Park Ju Sung. Four-star current and four-star potential ability for the 24-year-old South Korean. We played against him last year uh, when we were at Shenyang Urban. He was in that all-sound side that eventually knocked us out of the Champions League and went on to win that competition. So he knows how to win that comp. He's won it a couple of times. Four times in the last five years, to be clear. So he won it in 2029, he won it in 2031, 2032, and last year in 2033. Hopefully getting him here on a long-term deal, on some decent cash, and he is an Asian representative player. So of our four internationals, one needs to be Asian to qualify into the Champions League. So we've kind of like ticked that box. The left back position for China is a little bit weak. There aren't many players there that I think are at that Asian Champions League standard. So it seems like a good place to try and bring a player in for an international spot. And it seemed like a really good place, I think, based on the depth for players at like Australia, Japan, China. Sorry, not China, Korea, South Korea specifically. They We could use that spot and really kind of like make the most of the position. So he's come across. He's been excellent so far. Did pay a bit of cash for him, 10 million. Not that bad, actually, when you consider his value is already 47 million. I'm not sure why. Ulsan were so willing to let him go given that he was a pretty key part of their side last season but they have and so far he's been really really good for us as well um, rounding out that back five is this guy Zhao Gang I would have loved to have signed him permanently and I think we will relatively soon there are limits on how many players you can actually bring in of Chinese nationality during the course of the season you can sign about five permanently which is why he's on loan he's also joining us from Ulsan where he hasn't actually played that much no first team appearances for them yet but he looks to be absolute quality already three and a half star current ability and five-star potential. He is on loan for this season, but there is potential that we might get him for just 10 million yuan at the end of the season once we can actually start bringing those players back in. I think he's going to be excellent for us as well. He's already started the season fantastically. Again, three and a half star current ability, five star potential. For him to be that cheap, it, it seems a little bit weird to me, but that's okay. At the base of midfield, another of our international signings, 27-year-old Chilean midfielder Leonardo Valdez, 72 uh, 72 caps and five goals for the Chilean national side. Four and a half star current ability and five and a half star potential. Also, four and a half star potential as well. Passing is excellent. Technique is wonderful. I've got him playing as a deep line playmaker on defend. His tackling and positioning do need a little bit of work, but his overall quality in possession and with the ball, like he should be an absolute star of this division. And you can see 18 vision, 19 decision making. Oh, sorry, 16 decision making, 19 determination. Good physical attributes as well. An absolute beast in central midfield. We have changed our tactic a little bit to try and like accommodate him a little bit more. We'll go through that in a moment. Uh, another one alongside him, Wang Jia Tong or Chia Tong, I think it would be, has joined on free transfer from Qingdao, where he played last season. He was a Tianjin junior, came through there. Three star current ability, four and a half star potential for the 21 year old midfielder. Has a decent amount of under 20 caps as well. So he's got a bright future we're going to try and maybe bring another player in in this position throughout the course of the season but again we're limited to how many players we can sign on free transfers he comes across on a free and will be excellent and a developing player for the season ahead at right wing the third of our four international players alexander diaz 26-year-old Colombian international with 16 caps and four goals to his name, either footed, so he can fill in as both the inverted winger or inside forward on the left and the inverted winger on the right. That's how we're going to try and use him this season. Four and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential on a shitload of cash. 600k a week is the highest paid player in the squad itself. But really, for what do we want him to do, this inverted winger on support role, he's at least double figures for everything. Most of the key traits that we're looking for, he's above like a 14 or a 15. Lots of 16s jumping out at you here. Maybe dribbling needs a little bit of work, but that's okay. The level of like level and quality of right backs in the division and left backs 
I think he'll still be able to get past them with like 12 dribbling. Been excellent for us so far this season. 7.40 in his one appearance in the Super League this year and was excellent in preseason in all our friendlies as well. He's going to be an absolute star. Another new face and one that I actually brought in on a free transfer from Internacional in Brazil is Jordan or Jordan, we'll probably just call him. 20-year-old number 10 advanced playmaker. Looks to be an absolute beast. When I went in to sign him, Arsenal were interested, Chelsea were interested, a few other European giants were interested as well. And for whatever reason, he decided to come to us. He's on good money, he gets 200K a week, already worth 49 million in value, even though we didn't sign him for anything. So he's immediately spiked up. Four star current ability, five star potential. I think he's got arguably the highest potential of any player in the division. Again, either footed, wonderful technical attributes for someone so young. Mental attributes will continue to grow. Physical attributes will continue to grow. Keep an eye on him. I think he's going to be a star for us this season. Over on the left wing, another free transfer, Lee Boyang joins. He's a full Chinese international with 44 caps and 22 goals to his name. Right-footed player playing on the left-hand side. He will play as an inside for us, inside forward for us this season. The one downside is his finishing. We may There is another player that I'd love to bring in for this position in this role, but again, because of registration rules, can't quite get him yet, but maybe next year, this is one we look to strengthen. But to have a player jump in who is a key part of the Chinese national side into our first team squad with a whole bunch of experience and exposure to this divisional level, I think he's going to be absolutely fantastic for us. So looking forward to seeing what Lee Boyang does on the left-hand side. And then one of the big money signings, not from star rating, but certainly he cost us a bit, is 28-year-old striker Ku Hao is how I'm going to go with it. Again, probably wrong. It's probably like Chia Chu Tao. We'll just go with Tao. Let's just call him Tao for shits and giggles. 50 cap, Chinese international, 22 goals to his name. At 28 years of age, he has had quite the story career. Came through at Real Madrid, made one first team appearance for them way back in the day. Eventually left on a free was at Alaves, left them on a free was at Almeria, and now makes the jump across to China for 65 million. But he has pretty much all the traits that we need from pressing forward. I think mentally excellent, physically excellent. Maybe finishing needs a little bit of work, but I think he's going to be one of those players that if we get him in form and get him scoring, he is going to jump up above the current potential ability of three stars. Again, on decent wages, but he is a full Chinese international. He is leading the line when he's fit for the Chinese national side. Really, I think the only other player that's potentially better is this guy, Chao Yin Hu, but we can't really sign anyone from Shandong, which is where the challenge comes into it. We're really working hard to try and pick up other high quality Chinese players that aren't already in that Shandong setup to try and catch up to them a little bit. I won't take through every one of the squad players because the depth isn't brilliant. There are some very strong players like this guy, Li Chen, uh, that we're on at the moment. Very high potential young central defender that came through at Beijing is now at Guangzhou. Excited to see how he progresses given you know minutes throughout the course of the year. This guy, Wei Haran, 18-year-old midfielder, also looks to have really high potential. Came through the Guangzhou Academy, which we're going to try and build up over the next few seasons. I think he's going to be excellent for us as a young, young player in the squad. Sun Hua, it looks to be very quality. Again, 10 cap Chinese international, one goal to his name, can play on both wings, which is great for us. We'll probably likely use him mostly as a backup inside forward on the left, I think. But he looks to be a very big and important player for the overall squad itself. He looks to be a real leader in the team. Liu Wei Ming also came through at Guangzhou. No first team appearances yet, but four star current ability is exciting. Again, a right footed player playing on that inside left. We're going to try and teach him this inside forward role. If he's finishing him improved, no reason he couldn't start a lot of games this season. And then the guy that we're probably going to see a fair bit of while Tao is injured is this guy Wang Hao, who again has also come through the Guangzhou Academy. 19 appearances and five goals to date. Excellent finishing ability. More of a poacher or an advanced forward than the uh, pressing forward that we kind of want him to be. But if we have a look at his stats for that role, he can do quite a bit of it. I think it's really just mentally he needs to get comfortable in that. But still only 19, no real pressure on him. And he is, of course, a homegrown talent, which we want to kind of continue to develop and continue to get through. But some big players. I'm very, very happy with the squad depth. And we do have two players every position, which is always fantastic to see. A couple of players in the under-23s that we are trying to get rid of that are just on you know decent enough wages. We're not desperate to get rid of them. We're well under the wage budget. And some good prospects down in the under-19s that might develop with 12 months in the under 19 set up and then maybe some lone football after that as well but I'm very very happy with the squad the tactic that we're going to go with still the 4-2-3-1 I'm going to keep going with this 4-2-3-1 style we will change our shape and our structure and maybe some of our stylistic play once we move across to Africa looking for the next uh, trophy in the challenge but again we're going to go attacking we're going to go with the possession based style as well I've dropped the ball winning midfielder 
And we're going to go with that DLP on defend to try and get the best out of Valdez. We'll play Mazal alongside him to do a bit of the running. And we're going to drop Jordan to be an advanced playmaker on support. Just so that we've got more of a deeper midfield three. And then I've pushed all three of the front three to be on attacking roles. So that they really try and isolate their players in 1v1 situations. Given how strong Boyang and Diaz are going to be this season. Possession based style. We have kind of altered that a little bit as well. And I'm going to make one further adjustment here. Also, we're going to take these inside forward and inverted winger roles, and we're going to just make them supporting roles just to match up with the fullbacks who have also gone back to support as well. This one's going to be a little bit more perhaps defensive than it has been in previous seasons. Think of like big away games in the league, like against Shandong, against Beijing. Think of away ties in the Champions League. This is what we're trying to build this one to kind of be. This should be our default. We do have enough strength, I think, in the squad to get past most players playing our style and playing in this attacking structure then when we really want to try and defend and keep the ball and effectively just stop the opposition from scoring or getting chances, this is what I want us to kind of try and drop back to, even though it is still positive, even though it is still a relatively high press, we're just going to be a little bit more reserved, a little bit more conservative in possession and hopefully keep the ball a bit more effectively. Now, the finances, because I know you've all been rubbing your hands together. These are not M's. These are B's. We currently have 5 billion yuan in the bank at the moment, and that has been growing uh, for each, each six months, it kind of looks like. It jumps up by about 1.5 billion yuan, which is to me is ridiculous. We are nowhere near capping out the rest of our transfer budget. We're nowhere near capping out the rest of our wage budget. So we are likely going to continue to see this moving further and further into the billions of dollars in the bank in the next few seasons if we don't immediately win the Champions League. So if we win that, it's going to go even higher, but then we're going to leave anyway. So just absolutely insane overall balance in terms of the funds that are available to us. If we have a look at our transfer details, we've got $1.93 billion, You oh sorry, not dollars, yuan in our transfer budget. We are currently able to spend an additional 34.1 million yuan per week on wages. Like, can you remember what we were working with last couple of seasons where we were over it by a million? We have 34 million not spent, including guys that we're paying like 600 and 400K a week. It is absolutely ridiculous cash that is here and available and going for the moment. Whole bunch of future clauses, which we're not going to worry about selling. They will, those will come in future days, weeks, and months. We've got pretty much full scouting for the entire world where we're keeping an eye on a variety of the best Chinese players, not just in the division, but around the world as well. We may, when we can, registration rules all pending, try and bring some of these big names back to China and really like build up our squad to have four and five star players entirely across the pitch. We've got a short list of young players that we're keeping an eye on. Just for shits and giggles, I'll put Haaland and Mbappe on there. This guy, Zhang Bao, I'd love to bring back. His contract's actually up at the end of the season, so maybe he's a mid-season one that we can get if we can bring him across on a free. Shan Dong's got a guy that's, whose contract's up at the end of the season we're going to keep an eye on. This is G. Zhao Long, who looks to be very good. We're keeping an eye on him. Wang Ming Zhuan, we've brought two players in from Ulsan. If we can get a third Chinese player across, I think he'd be brilliant to bring back in. Can play at the eight, can play at the 10. So there's a lot to still go out there. The only thing, reason that we're not going out and getting these players right now are the registration rules related. If those registration rules reset in the mid-season transfer window, I am going to start firing out some of this cash to... Like I've spent a lot. I have spent a lot of money. 270 million that I've already spent this season. Yes, activating release clause for a few of these players, but we also raised 430 million just clearing out some of the deadwood. The three players here, Mateus, Agum, Roberts, we couldn't register them because we already had way too many international players. So why not get rid of them, make more cash? We've made more profit this season than any season prior in the club's history. Just mind, mind-boggling amounts of money to me. And I almost don't know where to start in terms of spending it because of the registration rules but that could be could make for some interesting off-season transfer windows in the coming seasons which will be exciting for you guys as well the league itself okay so this is where we currently stand we're currently in top spot level with shandong one game played you can't read too much into that if we go to the season preview though we are expected to finish runners up behind them three three dollars forty uh, is our current expected odds for the season Interestingly, we don't have anybody in the starting 11 for the Media Dream 11, which again is player reputation, not necessarily reflective of the actual ability. They're saying that our star players for this season are going to be Valdez and Diaz makes sense. They are two of our big marquee international players. Shen Yang finally have moved off the bottom of the division in terms of where they're expected to finish. Now at $201 odds or Yuan odds. 
Apparently, all that took was me quitting and leaving the club for them to actually move up in that division and get that reputation. But they've been in Champions League football now for a few seasons. And for us, really, this season is just going to be about finishing as high as possible in the Super League, potentially maybe challenging for a title and really trying to get through to the Chinese FA Cup final. Semi-finals at a bare minimum, I think. If I can win the league and then get to the FA Cup, golden will be absolutely fine. Pass marks, I think, would be finishing top four or top three, realistically and qualifying for the Champions League comfortably and then giving a good show of ourselves in the FA Cup and potentially getting through to the semifinals. I think I could work for that sort of stuff. But more than enough for me, it's been a long episode already. You guys want to see a game and I'm desperate to bring one to you as well. You can see Tao's out for another four weeks to two months. Oh, I forgot about preseason friendlies. We played quite a few. Um, we are apparently a feeder club for Real Madrid, which I wasn't aware, so we immediately got them in. We played some big, big teams from around Europe, some mixed results in there. Had a good start to it with like kind of the UEFA Cup, maybe Euro, maybe Europa League teams, let's call them that. Uh, and then some of the Champions League more sides that you'd see like Real Madrid, Schalke, Wolves and Everton are in there as well, but Leicester's in there as well. We've not done too badly. We had some good results. We beat Schalke convincingly. We did beat Jiangsu in our opening game of the season, wedged in between there, had some heavy defeats against Bordeaux, Real Madrid, which is to be expected. Um, but really, these probably also made a quite a bit amount of cash for us. So financially, a very, very good off-season. Results-wise, a little bit to improve, but it is our first preseason. We're not going to panic too much. And we are going to play today Beijing, who are currently in fourth position, one of the big sides who are also expected to do very well in the division. They're expected to finish third, five yuan odds for the season ahead. And two players in the Media Dream 11. So it should be an interesting contest. We are going to go after it though. We're going to back ourselves this season. We're going to play with our attacking style and instruction. Got a little bit of creative work to do. We're going to play Jordan up front as a pressing forward. And that does mean there's a little bit of rotation that we have to do. So Jordan will move up to the top until Howe gets fully fit. Otherwise, pretty strong lineup. Very happy with it. Really only that one position missing from our preferred starting 11. But... I desperately want to try and start the season well, get some good results in the early part of the year, set down a marker for the rest of the division to try and catch up with. All right, looking at the Beijing lineup, they're playing a 4-2-3-1 as well. Still some real off players in there. Uh, Batella, Sturju, who's quite good. And I think it's Chuck Mena, Chuck Wana, Chuck Wana Mena uh, from Aston Villa. Like us, they'll be looking at this table thinking this is a must-win game for them. And if you think back to last season, Shandong running away with the division so early on in the year, they had a big points gap throughout the course of the season. We are, I think, both sides kind of desperate to avoid defeat. But we started brightly here. Chao Tong with the ball across to Jordan. Reverse pass to Diaz, and it's an excellent finish. Wonderful little confirmation there from Diaz and Jordan, who's filling in for us up front, but can do the role. And his passing is absolutely fantastic. As you can see here, just holds off a man, waits for the two defenders to commit. Lovely reverse pass, and then finds Diaz. Again, this is the bonus with him being both footed. Can play either foot, slides that one home near post on his right foot. Could have gone left hand side if he needed to as well. And it would see us go top of the division still. Though Shandong have already taken a lead in their match as well. Throwing on the right, here comes to Diaz. Plays a lovely little reverse pass. And I'll tell you what, that drive from the edge of the area wasn't miles away. Good little interplay again between him and Jordan. Throwing again here on the right. Most of our highlights are starting from set-piece throw-ins as things stand at the moment. But they've won back possession and are coming through into their own half now. Good ball in behind. Hayway does very well to uh, catch it back. Valdez, good ball over the top for Diaz. Two international players combining, and Diaz tries to drive from the wide area. Wasn't quite there. Keeper watches it comfortably into the side netting. 30 minutes played, no shots for them yet, but they do have a highlight here as well. Diaz with a good headed winner across from the goal kick. It's closed down well, way on the overlap. Can he get a good ball back across? It's a near post runner there, and he finds Chao Tong, and it's a wonderful finish from him. His second goal of the season. And we are 2-0 up now comfortably against Beijing inside 30 minutes who haven't really created too much of in terms of highlights of their own. Heiwei actually lost the ball there and then finds the cutback. Chia Tong has a whole lot of area to aim at there at near post. Keep it positioning, not fantastic, but he absolutely rifled that one into the roof of the net. And we take a very, very important 2-0 victory. Oh, sorry, 2-0 lead, I should say. We can demand more with 10 minutes and a half. They're coming forward here. Flick on header from G Bin on the right-hand side. Horan does well just to slow him down. Now the press should come in midfield. Don't overcommit to the ball, lads. Send them back if we can. Good little pressing play here in midfield, but they are working the 1v2 quite well, and that strike is horrific. That's nearly a throw-in. Minkun, long ball forward. Diaz with a flick-on header, but no one reads the play. Then back line two, Abasti and Sturgeu are the two ones, or are the two central defenders in the media dream 11. So... I would expect them to do be decent coming back out from the back as well. 
Ball forward here. Switch out to the left-hand side. First real penetration into the box for them. And it looks like they've gone and given a penalty. It will go to VAR. And we'll have to sit here and watch the referee run all the way across to the little screen. Again, football manager, I know this is a part of the game now, but it doesn't make the game more fun to watch that. Just tell me if it's a penalty or not. And they've given the penalty. And they're saying that's surprising in the commentary. It's going to be a Basti, one of the central defenders to take and Minkun did go the right way but not far enough and they brought it back to 2-1 kind of out of nowhere in the last few minutes of the half potentially if they have any further highlights here in the first half we might make a tactical tweak at half time but two minutes of additional time to be added on which we're through now so half time 2-1 up I'm going to say I'm happy with the performance so far and I think we are going to make that tactical tweak we can go to the possession based style let's drop off just a little bit and let's see if we can't just hold on to the play a little bit. Try and bring them out from the 18-yard area. And let's quickly as well have a look at the other Super League results as well. I want to keep an eye on this other result for Shandong. They're at home to Chongqing, 1-0 up at the moment, but a long way to go on that one. We're through the hour mark, so we're going to make some subs also. And looking at the average ratings, Boy Yang's not played that strongly, so we're going to bring on Wei Ming, the 18-year-old left winger. Ming Kun, they're saying he's not played that great. I don't think he's been that bad. Uh, but Hora and the 18-year-old hasn't had the greatest game. We're going to bring on Kai Peng for him. And I'm going to say I've got faith in you guys. Get out there and make a difference. And hopefully they'll respond positively. I'm going to hold off on that last sub for the last 10 minutes. But I have used a demand more shout. Just to hopefully give everyone some focus through to half time. Or full time. And Chongqing have just gotten an equalizer in their game. Just as I've said that. Before I even finish reading the sentence. Shandong have got another one. We're into the last 10 minutes. We're going to make this last sub. Valdez they're saying he hasn't played that great. But I'm not going to risk him. Maybe we'll just go on condition here. And they're saying way. Needs a little bit of support. So we're going to bring on Bao Cheng, one of our central defensive players, just to fill in. And we'll go demand more in that one. Three additional minutes to be added on. I'd have taken a 2-1 victory before the game if you'd had offered it. And it looks like we're going to get there. And it looks like potentially we are going to take a big, big result against one of our title rivals. I'm going to say it was a good win, even though I think they came back and really had the XG advantage by the end of the match. But we do go... Well, we do stay top of the division at the moment. Same goal difference, same guys played as Shandong. So I'm not sure how that's being decided at the moment, but we will take that position and we'll run with it as far as we can this season. Diaz, with his excellent goal, gets the man of the match award. Jordan makes his debut, as does Wei Ming and Boy Yang. Fantastic to get them back in the side. We've got a big run of games and fixtures coming up. But I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to try and fire through this season and really come back towards the end of the year, maybe to close out the Super League season, maybe with the Cup Final as well, to really kind of jump forward and get ourselves back into that Champions League conversation. That's the big focus for us this season. We covered off a tremendous amount in this episode. I'm very, very excited, not just about the bank balance, but the overall squad, the fact that we are at a big club now. I think we're at a realistic chance now that we might actually get our first Champions League title away in that trophy cabinet. Fill in, where is it? It's up there above me. We need to get that one filled in as soon as possible because there isn't that much time before FM22 gets announced and comes out and all that sort of stuff. So the clock is definitely ticking. If you want to help celebrate this big money move that we finally made, please drop a like on this video. Please subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on our future videos but really more than anything i just appreciate you guys watching as always i've been sean and i'll see you all again in the mixer